with me to cook with the king. Once more, I do address you from a state of isolation. I am indeed safe and secure at a secret location. Normally I would retire perhaps to Hampton Court, but the contagion being thus, I have had to go out into the wilds of my realm. At Hampton Court, I do have the facility of the most splendid, modern and practical kitchens in the known world, with many hundreds of fellows who do cater to my every need. Here I have reduced staff, all the more reduced, for my man-cook has gone into self-isolation, and thus I find that I do have to tend and shift for myself. My loyal subjects, there has, uh, for quite some time, been considerable interest amongst my subjects as to the nature of my diets. I have spoken upon this matter quite recently in the Q&A sessions. You will appreciate that I do have the very best of diets. I do eat of the very best of flesh. So today, we are going to make flesh pie. And I have just taken receipt of my ingredients. Mm. Uh. Mm. 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 Oh. Mm. Mm. Ah. Ah. And of course. The good, wholesome chicken. In a moment, my loyal subjects, I will tell you how to prepare your flesh and then how to make the flesh pie. The first part in the process of making flesh pie is that you must gut, skin and pluck your flesh. And there it is, an oven ready chicken. My uh, man cook, who has now placed himself in self isolation, has been so kind as to leave for me the necessary instructions for the making of flesh pie. I do note, however, from the instructions, this is for an eight portion pie. Well, as there is only me here, then I will make an eight portion pie. <laughs> now, the instructions. You do require just over two pounds of flesh. I understand that in the modern idiom that is referred to as one kilo. We did prepare our flesh uh, a short while ago. Then you do require three uh, tablespoons of oil, like so. Uh, you do require two onions, which are to be peeled and chopped. Now, just a note. The onion is a vegetable that does grow above the earth. Thus, it is not a common vegetable for common people. Then you do require um, three tablespoons of plain flour. You require uh, a small quantity 
of pepper, a small quantity of salt, as you do observe, <coughs> and also uh, the salt. And then you have a dessert spoon of something that is called ketchup. Now, I am not familiar with ketchup. I believe it is something from the more modern times. Similarly, you do require what is termed two stock cubes. These are most peculiar. They have the appearance of dice. They do not have dots upon them. They have a strange word, O-X-O. -O. Then half a pint of boiling water. These are all the ingredients with which we will make our flesh pie. Now, having assembled all of our ingredients, it is important that you do heat the oven uh, to wood log heat, or as is given here, gas oven mark three, 160 degrees, or to something I, I know not of, a fan oven to 140 degrees. Then, having done so, we add half of the oil to a pan and heat it. We then add all of the flesh and we agitate until all is brown. We then add the rest of the oil. We add the, the chopped onion and we agitate for a full five minutes. We then do add of the flour and we again agitate until everything has the appearance of being brown. Then we add the stock, which is the strange cubes now dissolved in the boiling water and the spoon of ketchup. This is added to the mixture. We then do add a pinch of salt and a pinch of pepper to whatever taste we desire. And then we bring the entire mixture to a simmer. And then we do decant into an oven dish where it will be cooked for a further two hours or until the meat is tender. But here, here's one I prepared earlier. Mm. And now I'm going to introduce you to the ingredients that we'll be using to make the short crust for our flesh pie. We have one ounce of unsalted butter, one ounce of pig fat, we have four ounces of plain flour, we have a quantity of salt, and here some very cold water. And the first thing we do is you do cut the butter and the pig fat into small cubes. So we cut the butter and the pig fat into small cubes, like so. These are then all placed in the mixing bowl. Having placed the butter and pig fat in our bowl, we now place a little of the flour to start with, and then taking our knife, we cut it all together. Cutting it together and mixing the flour with the fat and the butter, adding more flour till all the flour has been placed in the bowl with the fat and the butter. When all the fat and the butter has been cut through into the flour, like so, then we discard the knife and then we take a pinch of salt, like so, and sprinkle it upon the flour, and it is now that you need clean, cold hands. They say, cold hands, warm hearts, and I certainly do have a warm heart. With my cold hands, I take hold of the flour and I rub it together, like so, rubbing the fat, the butter, the pig fat into the flour until it all has the appearance of breadcrumbs. Now, as you can see, it has the appearance of breadcrumbs. So the next stage 
is to take a tablespoon of cold water and pour it into the mixture. Then, using a knife, we cut it all together. You may, if necessary, add extra cold water. And we do so until this mixture has the appearance of being a dough. When the dough has been cut, you'll find that it has the appearance of being a great globule of dough. And when it is of the right consistency, you'll also observe that you're able to move it around the bowl and it does take with it all the little bits of dough that are left, leaving you a clean bowl behind, like so. You'll observe that I have floured the rolling surface and also my rolling pin. I place the ball of dough upon the rolling surface and then with the rolling pin, I roll it out. Each time I turn the mixture a quarter and roll it out, then I turn the mixture a quarter and I roll it out. This turning ensures a near circular shape and an evenness of thickness of the pastry dough. Now you'll see that by a process of rolling and turning, we have a slab of pastry dough larger than the size of our pie dish. This is the pie dish we are going to use, and there you may observe. Now here's the technique. We take the dough and we gently roll it onto our rolling pin. This will enable us then to place it on the top of our pie dish. So now, Taking the dough to the far side of the dish, place it on, on so, we then unroll it upon the top of our pie dish, like so. Once the pie lid is in place, taking a sharp knife and cutting to the edge of the pie dish, we remove the excess pastry, like so. This pastry is then Collect it together, set aside, and may be used for the purposes of decorating our pie. I have a surprise for you, as you'll see in a moment. Once the pie crust is in place, taking our thumb and forefinger, we crimp the edges like so. Having crimped the edge of our pie, we set the pie to one side and then pay attention to a roll of leftover dough. You'll recall, I'm going to use this for decoration. And so, with the rolling pin, I begin, as before, to roll and turn, roll and turn, until I have a nice slab of pastry dough from which I may make my decoration. Now you can see the component parts of my decoration. But first, I bring the pie back in, and then, with a fresh egg, I take a suitable receptacle, I break the egg, like so, then, with a device that I'm not fully familiar with, I believe it's called a fork. I, however, think it looks like Satan's trident, but in any event, with this device, I beat the egg in a suitable receptacle. Having beaten the egg, I take a bristle brush and I glaze the top of my pie, ensuring to cover all of the pastry. Now that the pie has been glazed, I take my decoration. And you may observe 
there are five outer parts to my decoration. Have you got the clue yet? For my decoration is the Tudor Rose. Now I do glaze the decoration so that when it cooks it has a nice golden brown appearance. And lastly, before we venture near the oven, I take my sharp knife and I enter some vent holes so that when the pie is cooking, the steam may be released from within and it will not come to any harm. And there you have it, a splendid flesh pie, which will now go into the oven at log mark 180 degrees, whatever that may be, for a further 25 to 30 minutes, or until the crust is golden brown and has risen nicely. And there you have it, a perfect Tudor flesh pie. I do hope that you've enjoyed this session of Cooking with the King. Perhaps you may even wish to make a flesh pie in a similar manner to your king. If you do, then be pleased to post the results so we may see how you have fared. And as we do continue in safety, security and isolation, I do bid to all of you, my loyal subjects, to keep in peace unity and concord, and be assured that the Lord our God does indeed love of you, the common people. For indeed, that is why he did make so many of you. We will release films on Tuesday and Friday of each week. Should you wish to see any of our other films that we have been releasing over these last several weeks, then be pleased to click the link here. Then you may subscribe to my YouTube channel, the link to which may be found here.